In October 1973, President Richard Nixon was under siege, Watergate, and more. Good evening. It is an all-out war. The Yom Kippur War in the Middle East, with the risk of a U.S.-Soviet confrontation. The resignation of Vice President Spiro Agnew. I will have nothing more to say. The naming Vice of President a new Vice President. States, Congressman Gerald Ford of Michigan. And that same day, a fateful court ruling. The U.S. Court of Appeals has ruled decisively against Mr. Nixon's position on his secret White House tapes. The White House tapes, potential evidence of a Watergate cover-up. Nixon had been fighting to keep them secret. Now, a federal court ordered him to turn them over, but Nixon had other plans. President Nixon announced that he will neither appeal nor comply with a federal court order to turn over the Watergate tapes. The president said he will provide a summary of the tapes to both Judge Sirica and the Senate Watergate Committee. Watergate Special Prosecutor Archibald Cox responded in an extraordinary nationally televised news conference. In the end, I decided that I had to try to stick by what I thought was right. Cox rejected Nixon's plan, saying it violated the independence promised him by Attorney General Elliot Richardson. The prosecutor and the president were on a collision course. The country tonight is in the midst of what may be the most serious constitutional crisis in its history. Nixon ordered Richardson to fire Cox. Richardson refused and resigned. His deputy, William Ruckelshaus, also refused and also resigned. Solicitor General Robert Bork was made acting attorney general, and he fired Cox. One White House source said the president's motive was solely to remove the possibility of a constitutional confrontation as quickly and as thoroughly as possible. Stanley Pottinger, then the deputy attorney general for civil rights, was with Elliot Richardson that night. The FBI had been ordered to secure the office of the attorney general. So uh, two FBI agents appeared in the hall. One took his coat off and threw it over his shoulder. Uh, so you saw his chest holster. And then they marched in to the attorney general's office, and Elliot Richardson was extremely gracious and said, welcome, gentlemen, the office is yours. The Saturday night massacre triggered a firestorm of protest. More than 50,000 telegrams poured in on Capitol Hill today. Most of them demanded impeaching Mr. Nixon. The president was forced to back down. This president does not defy the law. But Nixon did not turn over the most incriminating tapes, and he went after the press. I have never heard or seen such outrageous vicious, distorted reporting in 27 years of public life. In the end, of course, Richard Nixon had only himself to blame. Our history shows the American people will put up with a great deal, even when the demands on them are outrageous. But they will not put up with anyone who claims to be or tries to be above the law, immune to the rules applying to everybody else. If anyone acquires that privilege, it'll be the end of this country. It's incredible wow. to watch the history and then, you, of course, that you see some parallels. You were there. You were the White House correspondent. Was it immediately clear just how grave this moment was? Well, I think it was. We knew from moment to moment that this could not have a good ending as we kept moving forward because the president would not give up those tapes. And we were hearing what was likely on the tapes that he was actually protecting his own words in which he was saying we can get the money to pay the burglars for the payoff and everything. The interesting thing about that was that it had been building for about four months at that point, so there was this enormous kind of sense of possibility at any moment that the place was going to come apart, but it didn't. It didn't in part because Congress kind of held the line in terms of being fair and, uh, and, and in touch with each other. Mm -hmm. My favorite parts of the story is that on Friday before the Saturday Night Massacre, I'd gotten a tip that Elliot Richardson had been at the White House and General Haig told me they thought they had him in line, but that wasn't true. Saturday morning, I got up and went up to New York to do the nightly news, and Dan Rather was, uh, did the same thing for CBS on the plane. On the way back, we're rushing back, sat Eric Severoid, who was the great sage of yeah. CBS mm -hmm. News, sitting on the aisle. Everybody was coming up to him and saying, Mr. Severoid, what's going on? What's going on? He said, oh, I can't talk about it. Came back to Dan and me, and he said, what the hell was going on? <laughs> <laughs> I've been making a speech in New England. I have no idea what's happening. Uh, so, yeah. 
Well, was- I got to the White House and went to the lawn, and uh, Ron Ziegler talked to me, and I remember at the end of the evening, he was waiting for his car, smoking his pipe, because they thought it was going to turn out okay. What do you think, Tom, just quickly, about the differences between then and now? Well, I think there are big differences. One is that uh, we knew that there were parts of that tape that were very likely incriminating, and they were on the tape, the yeah. president's words. We don't know that about Donald Trump at this point. Does he have, do we have the evidence that is there in some form? And the difference then and now is that Congress found ways to work together behind the scenes. They weren't as divided as they are now. The country is so deeply polarized and we didn't have social media. Right. So we were beyond the air. We would tell everybody what we knew, but we didn't make judgments about guilt or innocence. Mm-hmm. I didn't say at the end of my report, yeah, I think he's guilty. You're right. You know, we would deal with what we had, and we all kind of were a check on one another in the White House press corps. You know, mm-hmm. going too far here, got to be careful, check with what I've got, mm-hmm. hope that it's true. Um, and that's a huge difference because now the whole country is involved and it's so terribly polarized, left and right, and yeah. it goes on 24-7. So we have very little opportunity to stand back and reflect and say, let the rule of law take its place yes. and play it out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Always oh, good to have you. Thank you, Tom.